Hi folks and welcome back. So this week we are talking about bullshit. Uh, we are reading an article by a philosopher from Princeton named Harry Frankfurt. Uh, and Frankfurt uh, did work in a lot of different areas of philosophy, um, but perhaps perhaps unfortunately for him, became most well-known and most famous uh, for a short little paper that he wrote called On Bullshit. Uh, Frankfurt wrote this paper in, uh, I think it was 1987 or so, uh, because he was concerned with the growing, ever-growing amount of bullshit uh, that we encounter in our daily lives, uh, that we encounter especially in the political sphere. And he, uh, he wanted to say something about it from a philosopher's perspective. Uh, and uh, it was published in the early aughts uh, in the form of a little book uh, that um, made a big splash. He ended up on uh, The Daily Show and a number of other uh, both news and entertainment programs talking about bullshit, uh, talking about what it is and why it's problematic. And so we're, uh, we're going to uh, dive into Frankfurt's account, try to understand what he's doing here, uh, and try to say something philosophical about bullshit. So here we go. Uh, so what is bullshit and why should we care about it? Well, it seems to abound in our culture. It seems to be everywhere. No matter where you turn, somebody's trying to bullshit you in some way. Uh, we certainly encounter it in politics. We certainly encounter it in advertising uh, and public relations. We come across it all the time in social media uh, and in the mass media. Uh, you know, cable news, 24 hour cable news is just full of bullshit uh, because they just have a ton of airtime to fill. Um, and we also come across it in a sort of physical instantiation, and I'm not talking about cow patties out in a field. Uh, I'm talking about products that we encounter where we sometimes refer to the things that we've bought as bullshit. Like a lot of the toys that m my parents end up buying for my kids, I would consider bullshit products. Um, so we want to say something that ties all of these different uh, instantiations of BS together. We want to try to say what it is that makes them all instances of bullshit. Um, but why? Why should we care about it? Well, Frankfurt thinks we should care about it because it seems pretty pernicious. Uh, it seems to undermine dem democratic engagement. It seems to undermine communication. And it seems to undermine social cooperation. The more bullshit there is around, the harder it is to tell what's sincere, the harder it is to tell what's worth listening to, which voices uh, we ought to pay attention to, and which ones are just trying to manipulate us in some way. It seems to break down the, the, uh, the fabric of social trust that we need in order to engage in meaningful ways with one another. So if bullshit really does that, then we should care about it. We should worry about it. And we should be able to identify it when we see it. We should be able to call bullshit when we encounter bullshit. Uh, so um, it seems worthwhile to try to say exactly what it is. And that is, in fact, exactly what Frankfurt sets out to do. Uh, he wants to provide what philosophers call a conceptual analysis. Uh, a conceptual analysis is a way of giving a definition for a term. We identify some concept of interest, something that we want to better understand, uh, and we try to define it as precisely as we can. This isn't just a dictionary definition. We don't simply turn to Merriam-Webster or dictionary.com uh, and look up the definition and say, there it is, Philos philosophical work is done, uh, let's move on because dictionary definitions are usually not very precise. Um, they're pretty open, a little bit messy. Uh, dictionaries don't determine for us what a word means. Lexicographers, when they're putting together dictionaries, uh, you know, they, they look uh, at actual uses of a word. They go out and do research about how different communities are using a word, how it appears in print, how it appears in online media, how it appears in televised media, uh, and they try to capture um, 
try to capture uh, the the key features of a term, um, but often leave the edges pretty fuzzy. They're not totally precise in their definition, um, but it you know, does what we need it to do. Philosophers are more interested in uh, identifying the necessary and sufficient conditions for something's being the thing that it is. Right? So what has to be true of bullshit or of some potential instance of bullshit in order for it to be properly called bullshit? What properties does it have to have to count as an instance of this kind? Uh, and what properties are sufficient for it for counting as an instance of this kind? That is, if it has these properties, then it definitely is bullshit. Uh, then it definitely does count as an instance of this kind. If we can identify the necessary and sufficient conditions, then we'll be able to sort all of the claims that we encounter or all of the things that we encounter in the world in the world into those that are bullshit and those that aren't bullshit will have a test will have um uh you know a bullshitometer <laughs> uh, that will sort uh everything into or well will be bullshit good bullshit detectors will be able to sort everything into bullshit and not bullshit uh and um it seems like it would be worthwhile to be able to do that because then we'd be able to say all that stuff that falls into that category, let's just push it aside. Let's ignore it. Let's not be taken in by it. Let's focus on the sincere discourse over here uh, that is the non-bullshitting discourse. Uh, so that would be the, that, you know, that's what Frankfurt is hoping for here. He's trying to provide a conceptual analysis so that we have a better understanding of this pernicious phenomenon that is uh, that is prevalent in our everyday lives. So how does he go about it? Well, the first thing he does is turn to an old definition uh, from a, a philosopher named Max Black uh, of a term that um, Frankfurt says is, for all intents and purposes, very much like bullshit. Uh, an older term that we don't really use that much anymore, the term humbug. Uh, you, most of us have only ever encountered humbug in uh, in uh, Christmas Carol, when you know, Scrooge says, bah, humbug, but we don't really think about what it means. We just think about it as a sort of derisive term, but humbug did mean something, does mean something. Um, humbug, according to Black, is a deceptive misrepresentation, short of lying, especially pretentious word or by pretentious word or deed of somebody's own thoughts, feelings, or attitudes. So it's a deceptive misrepresentation of one's own thoughts, feelings, or attitudes. It's putting on a show, right? Uh, so humbug is putting on a show when Scrooge says, bah, humbug. He means all of this humbug going on in the Christmas season is just people putting on a show for each other. It's not uh, a true expression of their feeling. It's not a true expression of their sentiments. It's not sincere. It's all a show. We might say something similar about, uh, you know, a 4th of July celebration as, uh, as Frankfurt points out, when an orator gets up and gives a very impassioned speech about the 4th of July, or thing. humbug, like, I know that that's not really what's in that guy's heart, that that's not really what he feels. He's just putting on a show because he's trying to get our votes, right? It's a deceptive misrepresentation of somebody's own thoughts and feelings. And uh, Frankfurt says, this is, this is a good place to start, but it's not quite right. We've got to refine this definition somewhat. So it's a starting point for our conceptual analysis. It's not the end point of that. Analysis. Let's start by saying what we mean when we say that something is deceptive misrepresentation. Well, to deceive someone, uh, you have to intend to pull one over on them. Right? You have to do this intentionally or deliberately. Uh, you don't deceive someone, you might accidentally lead someone astray, but you don't really deceive someone unless you try to do it. So deceptive misrepresentation, to misrepresent what, what you are, what you feel, what you think uh, in a deceptive way means you're doing it deliberately. 
you're trying to pull one over on someone. It depends on your state of mind or the perpetrator's state of mind. So there's a key point to understand about bullshit and about humbug. Uh, it's that these are deliberate acts. And in order to properly accuse someone of bullshitting, we have to be able to attribute to them uh, a particular state of mind that they are trying to deceive in some way. Um, so someone might, uh, acting in a way that seems like bullshit to us, um, but they might, in, in fact, not be trying to deceive us. They might just not know any better. And that wouldn't count quite as bullshit, uh, according to Frankfurt's analysis. The next part of Black's definition of humbug is that uh, it involves pretentious words or deeds, or the use of pretentious words or deeds. And uh, Frankfurt points out that, you know, pretentious bullshit is certainly a thing. Um, there are, there is, you know, we might call someone out for their pretentious bullshit. Um, and it's motivated by their pretentiousness. We might think that the reason they're bullshitting, the reason they're trying to deceive us is because they're so damn pretentious. But not all bullshit needs to be pretentious. Some bullshit is more humdrum than that. Uh, some bullshit tries to deceive us in other ways. It's not always about pretension. Um, so uh, he sets that aside. He says it's not, it's not necessarily pretentious word or deed. And it's a misrepresentation of one's own thoughts, feelings, or attitudes. What does that mean? Well, to start getting at it, Frankfurt says, notice something about lying. When you lie, you deliberately misrepresent two things. The first thing you misrepresent is the way the world is. When you tell a lie about how much money is in your bank account, so you're trying to get a loan and you tell a lie about how much money is in your bank account, you're misrepresenting, deliberately misrepresenting the way the world is, the state of affairs as it pertains to your bank account. But you're also misrepresenting your own mind, what's in your own mind. In particular, in this case, your belief about what's in your bank account, because you know that there's less money than you're saying is in there. So you're not only misrepresenting what the world is like, but you're also misrepresenting what's in your own mind, your own beliefs about the So lying involves these two separate detention, uh, two separate misrepresentations, these two separate deceptions. Uh, if you successfully lie, you deceive someone in two distinct ways. Humbug or bullshit uh, isn't quite like that because its primary intention is not necessarily to misrepresent the way the world is, but rather to give a false impression of what's going on in the mind of the speaker. So while lying is intended to deceive regarding the state of affairs and also deceives about the speaker's state of mind, it deceives about the speaker's state of mind in a, in a sort of distinctive way, right? It doesn't actually make a claim about the state of mind of the speaker. When you tell a lie, you don't make a claim about what's in your mind. You make a claim about what the world is like, right? You claim that there's more money in your bank account than there is. But you give others reasonable basis to suppose something about what you believe, about what's in your mind you give others reasonable basis to suppose that you believe that there is as much money in your bank account as you're saying there is. Um, so you intend to deceive regarding the state of affairs, and then you end up deceiving others about the state of affairs inside your head. When it comes to humbug or bullshit, uh, you're, it's not necessarily intended to deceive regarding the state of affairs. You may deceive regarding the state of affairs, you may not doesn't seem to matter whether uh, the world is or is not as you're saying it is. What you primarily intend to do is deceive others about what's in your mind or what a bullshitter primarily intends to do is to deceive others about what's in their mind. Um, and they do it in the same way as a liar does. They don't say what's in their mind or say something deceptive about what's in their mind. So they don't tell a lie. Uh, and it's instead they give the audience 
reason to think that they believe something. They give the audience reason to infer to a particular state of mind, to infer that they believe that something is the case. And in this way, it's short of lying. It's short of lying in the way that it deceives because it doesn't necessarily involve uttering a falsehood. When you tell a lie, you say something false. When you bullshit somebody, you may not say something. You may say only two true things and still be a bullshitter. So there's a key difference. The next thing Frankfurt does is turn to uh, this idea of what I call bullshit products at the beginning. Um, and he says, you know, notice that um, when we turn to crafts, craftsmanship, uh, we might think that, you know, it used to be the case that people were concerned about what their products were like inside and out. Like if you opened up uh, or turned around uh, a, a piece of work that someone did, the backside was supposed to look as good as the front. Uh, all of the joinery was supposed to be uh, precise. All of the work was supposed to be perfect. Steve Jobs talks about this, uh, or used to talk about this with regard to Apple products, right? That uh, they are supposed to you know, achieve this sort of perfection inside and out, uh, that it matters what the, uh, what the, even, th that even the parts that no one will ever see, the craftsmanship matters in those parts. But most products today are not like that. <laughs> um, I was, mentioned to my kids toys earlier uh most of these toys that we buy today that you, know, you get off amazon and they come to your house and they don't have any particular brand name associated with them they're just some random uh toy that was produced at some random factory in china uh and you get them and they're just complete garbage <laughs> they're shoddy worksmanship uh they fall apart they break easily they're cheap plastic uh they're just a few wires soldered together that come loose very quickly um they're bullshit right um and so one thing that might lead us to is to think that a bullshitter is lazy right that they're undisciplined they're trying to get away with doing less work uh they just don't care uh, about what's coming out of their mouths, about what they're saying, about the words or sentences they're producing. But Frankfurt said that's, for, says that's, that's not quite right uh, because there are some, uh, some well-practiced, very careful bullshitters. Uh, a bullshitter need not be lazy. Some bullshit is exquisitely crafted and sophisticated. Think about advertising and the money that goes into it and the research that goes into it and the polling that goes into it. Think about PR, uh, public relations work. Think about uh, politics and the amount of money and work that go into it, into crafting this bullshit. Uh, so it need not be laziness that leads to this shoddy, this shoddy product. Um, yet there's still something that the bullshitter's trying to get away with. Uh, there's some laxity. He eludes the demands of discipline in some way. Uh, you know, he's, he's still ending up with a product that is not worth having, um, a product that is, is pretty shitty, whether it's uh, a physical product or whether it's uh, the words or sentences that he utters. But it's not because he's lazy. So what is it? What is he lax about? What's the bullshitter getting away with? Well, Frankfurt says she looks like she's engaged in an activity where truth and falsity matter. Right? When you're bullshitting, the words that come out of your mouth, if they were spoken sincerely, would mean something, and we could fact check them. We could say, yeah, those are true or they're false. And uh, for most of us, it would matter whether those words are true or false. But for the bullshitter, she's not the least concerned with the truth value of her statements. She doesn't care if they're true or false. She's not worried about that in the least. That's just the farthest thing from her mind, whether the things coming out of her mouth are in fact true or false. The bullshitter isn't interested in communicating beliefs. Her claims lack any connection to a concern with truth. They're indifferent to how things really are. Right? So a bullshitter just talks. So we sometimes say they just talk out their asses, right? They just talk. They're indifferent to how things really are. Um, and 
the purpose of their speech is not to communicate true beliefs to us. Uh, rather, it is to persuade us or deceive us or manipulate us in some way. So the bullshitter cares about how you emotionally respond to the things that they say, how you act on the things that they say, but not whether they're communicating true belief. And that means that what the bullshitter is lax about is the rules of discourse. Because in general, when we're talking to one another, truth and falsity matter. Right? You should only say something if you have reason to believe that it's true. You shouldn't say it if you aren't sure about it or don't have some reason to believe that it's true or if in fact you believe that it's false. But bullshitters just throw those rules out the window. They're being lax with the rules of discourse and they're trying to get away with looking like they're playing the same linguistic game that the rest of us are playing. They're trying to get away with looking like they're engaged in conversation in the same way that the rest of us are, engaged in political discourse in the same way that the rest of us are. But they're not because they don't care, literally don't care, whether the things they say are true or false. That, according to Frankfurt, is the essence of bullshit. When an honest man speaks, he says only what he believes to be true. And for the liar, it is correspondingly indispensable that he considers his statements to be false. For the bullshitter, however, all these bets are off. He is neither on the side of the true nor on the side of the false. His eye is not on the facts at all. He does not care whether the things he says describe reality correctly. He just picks them out or makes them up to suit his purpose. So liars, like honest people, are constrained by the truth. They need to know what they think the truth is so that they can deceive others about it. They need to, and they need to, to deceive them in a way so that uh, this deception that they're engaged in fits with other things they believe to be true. But bullshitters just don't care about the truth. And so bullshitters will just keep weaving a tale. It doesn't need to fit with any other thing that they might believe because they just don't, they're not in the business of communicating beliefs. Uh, so they can just keep kind of pushing, uh, pushing the envelope, just keep weaving their tall tales, right? They're just not concerned with truth. So the essence of bullshit is this lack of care uh, about the rules of discourse, the lack of care about truth and falsity. The bullshitter just says whatever it seems to him or her necessary to say in the moment to suit their purpose. They say what the people in front of them want to hear if they want the people in front of them to like them. They say what the people in front of them need to hear if they want the people in front of them to get riled up and pissed off and, and take action. They say what the people in front of them need to hear if they want them to buy their product or vote for them. Uh, they say whatever they think the people in front of them need to hear in order for them to make them alone. Right? They just say whatever it is they feel like saying as long as it suits their purpose. They don't have any concern at all with the truth or falsity of what comes out of their mouths. So how much bullshit is there? Well, loads of it. <laughs> there are piles and piles of it, and it just keeps piling up. It's all over. Uh, it is in politics. It is in media. It is in social media. It is in advertising and PR. There is the bullshit just abounds around us. Um, and in some spheres, it seems to be the dominant mode of communication. Uh, if we look at uh, some political media, uh, if we look at many politicians, the way they communicate with us seems to be predominantly via bullshit. <laughs> they seem to have a very lax relationship with the truth. Our former president, for example, seemed to have a very lax relationship with the truth. And his supporters seem to understand that, seem to know that. They seem to not really care uh, that um, what he said was uh, not really intended to be true or false, uh, but rather intended to rile some people up, piss some people off, 
uh, or uh, you know, get a laugh from others. Right? It was about manipulating people's emotions, not about saying true or false things. Um, bullshit is all around us uh, and seems particularly pernicious. As Frankfurt argues, uh, bullshit does seem more corrosive than lying. Because when someone is telling a lie, you can usually de decipher, uh, or first you can usually fact check them, right? You can usually figure out uh, if it's true or what they're saying is in fact true or false. But there's no way to fact check a bullshitter, right? We saw this uh, during the last presidential administration you know, with fact checkers from the Washington Post and the New York Times and all of the mainstream media constantly calling out lies or untruths. Um, and it just didn't matter, right? It just didn't matter whether uh, what was coming out of the speaker's mouth was true or false. It just didn't matter um, in, uh, it just doesn't matter to a bullshitter whether they're called out for not telling the truth because they just don't care whether they're telling the truth or not. So fact checking seems to lose its force. Um, and, uh, as a result, it's also hard to determine what the bullshitters true purposes are. If you know that someone's lying to you, you can usually kind of reverse engineer what they're trying to get you to do through the lie that they're telling, how exactly they're trying to deceive you. But a bullshitter, it's much harder to re reverse engineer in that way because they're not necessarily telling a lie. They're, what they're saying may be true. Uh, or true in some sense, or true from some perspective, uh, or what they're saying uh, may have no relationship at all to the truth, um, but uh, may be intended to get you to act in a particular way at a particular moment, but it's hard to see that. It's hard to reverse engineer what the bullshitter was trying to get you to do. And if they're deep enough in their own bullshit, uh, then uh, we might not even... They might not even know exactly what they're trying to get you to do. Right? If they're deep enough in their own bullshit, they're just saying things to, to tie up loose ends from the last bit of bullshit that they fed you. So it's really hard to, to sort of figure out what their motives are. Um, and they have to keep bullshitting uh, in order to you know, make their old bullshit make sense. Uh, so they make an art of it and it proliferates, right? It has to just keep growing and growing. But perhaps the most pernicious thing about it, according to Frankfurt, is that it engenders a disregard for the norms of discourse, right? If we start just thinking that everyone's bullshitting, how do we communicate with one another? How do we ever figure out who's sincere and who to trust? What happens to actual fact-based discourse? What happens to actual truth-telling if bullshit predominates our political discourse, our public relations discourse, our advertising discourse, our public discourse in general? That seems like a really dangerous place to be. And that's Frankfurt's central worry. All right, we will pick up a discussion of this when we meet on Thursday.